Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. Let's practice painting more clouds. And you can see my cloud video. I'm gonna look at it right there. It's on my wall of my studio. Uh, let's have some fun and get started. Okay, I've got a sheet of canvas comes in a pad uh, from US Art Supply. I got it on Amazon. It's an 8 by 10. And they're just loose sheets that you can peel off. As I think I just said, I taped it to a piece of cardboard. And then I end up putting another piece of masking tape here just to keep me over on this side so my palette is in frame. I'm going to use Indenthrine Blue. My my styrofoam plate's a little wobbly or a little warped. And then you can mute the blue down, put a little black in it, put a little um, orange in it. I'm just going to do blue and white. I'm going to mix some here. I don't. I'm not going to have it too dark, so I'm just going to mix kind of a medium light blue. Prussian blue would work, ultramarine blue would work, cobalt blue would work. Um, and as I mentioned, you put a little black in it if you want to mute it down some. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe we'll just put just a pinch of black in it. Uh, Mars black. Titanium white, if I didn't mention it. I tend to buy it in the jar and the basics I go through quite a bit. Just grab a little. Okay. I don't know if we need to mix it real well. I tend to mix it pretty well. Gonna clean off my palette knife a little bit here. Okay, this is a one inch filbert brush from Royal and Lane Nickel. Um, 25 millimeter, their Zen line. Let's grab a little, little color. Let's just get some sky in here. can't totally see where my tape is. I got, I put two coats of white paint down and dried it with a hair dryer first. Um, just because I thought it might make it a little smoother. Um, quite often I don't do that because I like the texture of the canvas. I thought since we're going to do clouds and sky, we might want it a little smoother looking. So darker blue at the top. Lighter blue as we go down. I tend to like the sweeping. And then I'm, I'm lifting up like that. You could do it with a flat brush too. Oh, you know what? I probably want to stop because we're going to mix some orange here. So I probably mix more blue than I needed. But I can feel it getting sticky. So I think I'm going to stop with a hairdryer as soon as I cover that a little bit. And then I'll be back. Okay, I realized I was kind of touching. I dried it with a hair dryer. And I was trying to touch up a little bit. And I realized that a little bit was off camera. Okay, I'll be back. I squirted out a big pile of cad yellow medium hue and just a little bit of quinacridone magenta. And did I show you the indenthrine blue? I know I mentioned you could use any blue you want and just a little bit of quinacridone in the big pile of yellow to make an orange. And then I'm gonna mute some orange. I don't know if we're gonna need it. Sometimes I make mixed colors and I don't exactly know if I need them. Mix some more as we go. 
I'm going to grab just a pinch of the black because that will make a brown. Oh, look at that. It's too, too much black. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll just scrape off a pile of that, put it on a paper towel. That's better. I don't know if we want some yellow. Maybe some magenta. Oh, I think maybe that's what we want. Actually, what I just mixed, <laughs> that's funny, I could have just squirted it out, is pretty much a yellow oxide. Isn't that funny? Okay. I think I'm going to use, well, I kind of want to use a smaller brush because I don't have a lot of room to mix. I mean, it's really nice to use this big brush. Maybe I'll mix a little... white kind of want a peachy color okay, there we go maybe okay I wipe off my pellet knife and sort of clean my brushes as I go. Um, I just rinse it off in some water. I've got a pretty large mason, two mason jars full of water. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white just because it'll be more opaque. The orange is going to be transparent. And it's going to look a little green as it goes over the blue because of all the yellow in it. Just dip my brush in a little bit of water. I may want this color. So it is smoother since I put down some white paint first and dried that with a hair dryer. I hope I can feel it getting sticky. I'm going to grab just a little bit of water and a little more paint. I've got fans running. Um, it's summertime so things just dry faster for me. Yeah, I should just stop. I can feel it grabbing. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm gonna put another coat. Hey guys, it's the next day. And I think what I'm gonna do is mix a purple. I'm looking kind of for a, you can use kind of a blue gray. I'm gonna mix a purple and paint. You can paint the lighter clouds first. That's what's nice about acrylic is you can work dark to light or light to dark. But I think I'm gonna work with mostly the purple and get the clouds set. And then I think what I'm gonna do so I can relax a little bit more and focus on the painting is um, go to a voiceover from this point. Well, I'll, I'll let you know when here in a second. So I'm gonna mix a purple. I kinda like that one. And I'm just looking at it, how it um, looks against the white plate. Let's grab a little white and see if we still like it. And 
and then we'll go to the voice over here. Yeah, I think I like that. Oh, my stomach just growled. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Okay, so I just took some of the Prussian blue. Oh no, shoot. Indenthrene blue. I gotta remember we're using the Indenthrene blue. Use whatever blue you have. That makes it pretty purple with the Quinacridone magenta. Okay guys, I will be back at the end for sure with thoughts and comments. Hey, so the voiceover was a good idea. It allowed me to focus more on the clouds. I don't paint clouds very often. And it is much easier for me personally to do the white clouds over a blue background. I'll link that video in this video description. Um, that video has done quite well for me. I think it has, as I'm recording this, 40,000 views. And then as you saw just a minute ago, I took that reference photo off my daughter's deck. I won't follow the clouds exactly, but it helps me with the colors of the sky, getting them kind of close. It doesn't have to be exact. I mean, I've really got an orange-orange color going here, but I'm also trying to challenge myself because for me personally, it's harder to do clouds and color. And I'm, I just thought you guys might want to tag along. And then we'll do this again in, I don't know, a year or two and see if I get any better. So right now I'm just putting some light purple off in the distance, streaky clouds in. I've got a filbert that looks to be maybe a half inch. It could be a Simply Simmons or it could be a Zoo Ting from Amazon. The ones from Amazon are really expensive. And the Simply Simmons are a really reasonable price. I really like those brushes. Oh, and I'm putting a few darker clouds and I'm like, oh, it's scaring me because it's, you know, first clouds. And so I tend to use my fingers to dab off paint, and lighten it up just a little bit. So you're gonna see me think here. Think and wiggle and see if I like it. In my reference photo, see I changed my mind, I didn't wanna go quite so dark right away. In the reference photo, the clouds are a little lighter and grayer towards the horizon line right above the trees. And then they get a little bit darker in areas as you go up. Oh, Emily, favorite daughter who does the lives with me on Wednesday was saying, mom, do like blues to purples and then maybe, so blue at the top for the background sky that I orig originally painted before I started painting the clouds, then maybe go to purple. And then if you really want, if you wanted to go brighter and lighter, go to pink, um, that probably would be easier. Cause right now um, you definitely want to dry because I'm using compliments and it'll get muddy quick. It's not that you can't do it. You just need to make sure you dry and save steps because the two, when you mix complements, you can get mud or gray. To me, it seems kind of funny how slow I'm going. But you know, just go the speed that works for you. I know it's coming because I just painted this just moments ago. But I won't spoil it yet. I guess I could say, I changed my mind. <laughs> Buckle up, people, I changed my mind. I'm just trying, I'm just thinking random. I'm probably thinking I don't like these, you know, because I never like them at first. Whereas the when I do the white soft clouds on the blue background, um, as I mentioned, I'll link that video in this video description. I can keep them really soft and really light and sneak up on them. I might have been able to do that here. I should probably try it again and see if I can go with a really light purple and not go so dark so quick. I might be happier. You guys might be happy. If you take a little matte medium, I'm gonna break some matte medium out later here 
so that it's a really transparent color and then a more a lighter shade of purple and kind of sneak up on the clouds. I'm being a little bit brave here. So I don't know about you all, but right now I'm not crazy about these clouds. But this happens to me with, with paintings too. I know that layers can help me. I know little patience can help me. Um, details can help. Smearing can help because it pushes it back, makes it softer. You can tell I'm thinking, I'm not even painting. I'm really thinking. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard when it's really not working very well yet. Actually, I thought the blue background drying it and then painting the orange background and drying it worked quite well. Just dabbing and smearing. You could use a bigger brush too. Sometimes the smaller brushes um, can actually fight you more. You get kind of happier accidents when you use a bigger brush. Should take my own advice sometimes. One thing I like about the smaller brush is I can get into the palette better. Because I've mixed some of those colors pretty close together. Or use, you guys can use a larger palette. You don't need to stay in frame and when you're not videoing. Oh, here's the matte medium. I kind of swirl it. You don't want to shake it and get bubbles in it. Um, you could use gel glass medium. You could use, um, I think they call it extender or gloss extender. Uh, there's lots of things. I just like the matte because my paint's dry matte and then this medium will dry matte. I've got just gel gloss I could use, um, but it, it's gonna leave shiny spots where I, I use it in the color and I just that just bothers me some. So that's the only reason I use the matte medium. You could use water too. I like the creamier feel when I'm looking for a transparent color with a matte medium. And then if you worry about um, the paint not binding because you get way too much water in it, um, that solves that problem. You get the matte. Although they, the bottle says too that you can put too much matte medium. Although I've never had trouble with that. I think it's just acrylic base without any pigment in it, but I don't know for sure. Someone's adding some purple up here. And I, uh, honest to gosh, I don't know why. And I'm just trying to help my painting look better. Oh, so here I'm thinking, it's kind of like if you paint grass, if you get, you know, some colors and brush strokes in front and some behind, it looks better. But I'm wondering if this is almost, right now it's too light. And also I tend to, so I put in the puffy clouds, but I really tend to like clouds that sweep more. I'm trying to paint puffy clouds for you guys. And as I, as I already mentioned, I rarely paint clouds like this and I have never painted I, I think I've tried twice and I didn't like it and this is my third try um, of painting clouds with color you, everybody starts someplace and you gotta practice so you you guys get to tag along and watch me practice and see what I can do here and you don't have to share it on YouTube like I do <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, here I'm thinking, let's paint some trees because it might make more sense. Because in the reference photo, which I didn't show very long, I can post that in my Facebook group. The Facebook group will be linked in this video. Um, I'm just kind of warming up a black a little bit with some magenta for the tree line. You could, you could leave it black. You could make kind of a greenish, dark greenish. That's what I'm thinking here. And some of you like to see every step. So that's, I do these vid videos occasionally. That's why I'm doing this. You can, oh, of course, what's great about YouTube is you could watch it at two times speed or, or slow it down, whatever works for you. Oh, here's a Deerfoot stippler from Michael's. I think it's a, that's not a half inch. I think it's a three eighths inch. Artist Loft is the brand. They can be kind of fun to make some Bob Ross trees. Just kind of dip the end of it in paint. If you get too much paint, you can just offload it on a paper towel or just put, start where you think you want it darkest and then as it runs out, you can get the softer sort of stamping. I'm just kind of tapping and skipping along here. I'm kind of thinking tree line right now, even though I've got some really uh, repetitive shapes there. I'll co hopefully come back and fix them. I might, I, th I think I show you in a little bit the, the brush I remember to show you. You could do this with a filbert. I just thought it'd be fun to switch it up. Okay, so there it was. It had more paint on it, so I put the paint in the corner, and now I'm letting it run out. Oh, didn't let it run out that much, did I? Oh yeah, there it's very black. So my son is kind of in the bottom left hand side. It's not quite in the corner. And I'll pull out a little sun symbol here so you can see a little bit better. Oh, there it's running out. And you see how I'm getting kind of lighter, softer. I'm, I'm just cleaning it out of, cl cleaning it off on a paper towel. Oh, there I show you. Can you see the size? I can't see the size. That's not a half inch. Oh, number 10, Zhu Ting is the filbert. I got that on Amazon. Oh, and the big brush was like a, a one inch filbert from Royal and Langnickel that I painted the background with. So I'm adding some yellow to warm up my sort of warmish black dark color. Gonna add a little white here too. So if you want to color less, for lack of a better word, chalky looking, sometimes when you add white, you get kind of a chalky look. Add some yellow with it. I'll help it keep a, keep it a little richer. It might make it too warm. It just kind of depends on what you want. But already I think I like the trees. It's helping me. Oh, so I'm adding a little, whoop. It's a very subtle, but I'm adding a little bit of a highlight on the le top left of the trees. I'm gonna grab some of that uh, goldish yellow I made. That helps give, give him some shape. It's a cloud painting video, but I thought I just thought the trees might help anchor things. <clears throat> this 
Excuse me if you could hear me cough there. I moved my microphone away. Just clean out my brush. This is real time, people. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. Uh, favorite daughter Emily will put some music in the background, which I think is really nice. really thinking there. I was almost going to cut that out. Oh, so I'm going to put where the sun might be catching on the clouds. I really hope I get my little sun um, that Emily made for me out here so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's above Shining maybe to the left and above the trees on the left. Kind of where my other hand is leaning. Next to the palette. Oh yeah, see I'm even kind of drawn. I don't know if you noticed that, but I just pulled my brush down towards to where I think the sun's shining from. So that's another thing about sunset is the, the light catches the bottom of the clouds sometimes. And then the darkest part is the furthest away from the sun. So that would be the top right, and the bottom left would be the brightest. Hinting at an orange cloud here. I can't remember if I end up painting over it and not liking it. Yeah, so I keep thinking, okay, where do I want light? Where would it would the light catch? And I decide. Try and keep things random, that's always a challenge for me. You know, did I want to connect those two clouds? I didn't have to. Still not crazy about the clouds. Just, I think, I think, um, oh, sometimes people are like, don't be hard on yourself. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. There's a lot of uh, painting, the end of paintings. Um, I'm trying to decide how to describe this. When I see it coming together and then I can start playing, like that was a nice touch I just did on that little cloud on the top right. I think that works really well. Um, but it sometimes takes quite a while for things to start happening and for me to start liking them. So maybe the last quarter of a painting is the most fun for me. So I'm thinking light on the bottom, it's not really showing. So I grab a little white into my light orange, get a little more contrast. And remember, I painted the background and stopped and I came back the next day too. Um, paint this over a couple days, three days a week. Take your time. It would probably help me too. <laughs> I also think it's good because I'll get better at this. Every time I do it, I'll get better. Or maybe not every time, but the more I practice clouds, I'll get better. 
So I don't want to get too much white in there because there really isn't white in my reference photo. I'm not sure what I'm thinking here. Oh, I got my sun. I just was seeing if it was dry. Oh, that's probably why I waited. I was waiting for the trees to dry. There. That's kind of where I'm thinking my sun is shining from a little bit off my painting to the left. Bottom left. I'm so glad Emily made two of those for me. One has gla sunglasses on. It's really cute. Um, and I think it really helps in these videos for you to see where I think the light's coming from. Just bringing up the value a little bit there. And of course, if you want, you can just fast forward to the end and then, you know, use this as a reference. And I mean, your clouds will turn out different than mine, just like your handwriting is different than mine. But just like I'm using a reference photo for hints of what I should do, um, you can use this video for hints of what you might want to do. And I'm looking forward to learning from you guys. Some of you guys may just fall in love with painting clouds and get to be amazing at it. Then I'll learn from you. I'm excited. Oh, I just didn't like that patch of the sky, so I'm kind of covering it up. So it's nerve wracking because I don't know if what I'm doing is ruining it. That's always a problem with art. So I remind myself I can fix it. And I actually like what I'm doing here. Um, but you still don't like, okay, still don't like it, you know, still don't like it. I don't know that this does much. It's really intense, which also can make it harder. I mean, that's an intense fire sunset. Oh, I must be thinking here, I don't like how dark the clouds are. Or sometimes just a layer will help too. And I'm kind of leaving the top and the right darker. See, I'm, I like sweepy, so I'm starting to go sweepy here. And if you know what I mean by sweepy, rather than puffy clouds, I do clouds that are, are sweeping strokes. And I'm using matte medium so I can glaze and go slow and see how it looks. I tend to like soft. That's probably why I like that first cloud video so much. Because it's a blue background, as I mentioned, with just, I show you different uh, brushes and tools and matte medium and water. And I play with just puffy, they're puffy clouds, but I can keep them really soft and I can sneak up on them. I think that's why this one's bothering me more. It's like, ooh, it's like in your face clouds are right away. And I'm like, oh, I want this to go slower. So now I'm listening to myself a little bit and going, oh, let's soften these. And you may not like, I mean, that might not be your thing. Some people love to paint storm, storms and storm clouds. Oh, I think what I'm gonna do here We'll see here. I've got matte medium and some light blue. And I think what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put a little atmosphere over some of the trees and then also knock back some of that orange, which will also push my sunset off to the left more if I leave this straight up orange on the left. Yeah, so I'm grabbing matte medium, some lighter of the blue gray. That's one thing nice about if you mix even more than I did of your background sky color. You can come back and put it back in. So this, keep in mind, this is more practice than design. 
because I've got my strongest, brightest color in the bottom left. Um, I don't, I wouldn't probably put it uh, maybe more in, into a third, you know, rather than right on the corner. Put it a third away to the right or to the left. Probably, you could put it dead center. Um, I tend to put things on the third. No, I think I might be liking it better to put out a little more matte medium. I think it's good to watch me struggle and think. Some people like that and learn from that. Some people are like, wow, this is slow. I'm watching paint dry. Totally sure what I was thinking here. There was already a streak there, so I'm kind of mimicking it, and it was already bluish. Oh, maybe I'm just trying to get, um, I want darker in my painting, but maybe I just want it darker at the top. I'm trying to put in some. And it's like, how do you know it's not getting too busy? Well, it could be too busy already, depending on your tastes. Um, you just keep kind of trying. I could come with a huge brush and paint things out, you know. I could just start over. Sometimes you just have to try things. So I'm glazing, but I don't know that it even changes it here. I've got so much matte medium. I'm noticing it. It's not really changing anything. What I really should do, and I probably won't, but what I really should do is paint cloud paintings after cloud paintings, you know, different kinds of sunsets and stormy and sunny and I would get you would get better a lot much more quickly well, I've painted a lot of animals and it probably shows to you guys you could tell yeah I'm thinking darker at the top get a little more I don't know, a little more values going. I'm not crazy about the streaking. So I grab a little matte medium, I'm trying to soften it. Sometimes you have to go with what it'll do. For some reason, I decided to put some of the straight up out of the tube indenthrine blue on the trees. Maybe to tie them in. Maybe to give myself a break from thinking from the, about the clouds. That's one thing about like just stopping and only working for maybe an hour, two hours. I don't. I'm not always good at taking that advice. I do kind of like that though, it cooled it down. Now I just use my filbert on the trees instead of the Deerfoot stippler. Both work. The filbert can give you more sort of C-shape uh, brush strokes, 
Or the deer, deer foot stippler might give you a little bit more random, especially if you turn the brush in your hand. I'm thinking. <laughs> Woohoo! So some matte medium and blue. Oh, so one thing I've got going on is I've got I'm a little lopsided in my sky. The very bottom streaky cloud kind of goes up a little bit to the left. And so I put in that sort of uh, triangle V shape to help level it off a little bit. Now I'm just trying to put back in a bigger cloud, but not so dark. Now I'm thinking, okay, I don't want everything the same height. I think that was a little purple, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's still wet, matte medium in both colors. I like sweeping. I think it's getting better. I'm still not. So the other thing too is I will like this better in a couple days. When I haven't been on top of it, I'm not trying to evaluate, you know, the shapes, the patterns. I've kind of got three things stacked up on the right um, and they're all kind of had the same shape. I don't know if I'm going to catch that here or not. Um, and you'll see things you don't like, oh, I've got three lined up thing, you know, three lined up kind of pointed. If I say triangles, I don't think you'll see it. Here I'm just kind of blending out that cloud. I might have decided by here, like, I just don't like puffy clouds. <laughs> well, I like puffy clouds. I like them when I paint them in white. I think it's just experience and confidence is all it is. We'll get there together. So if I work on different areas, you know, I'm kind of working middle high right now, the bottom low can dry and then I can go back and work on the bottom half or so and let the top dry. Or you can stop. Like sometimes I'll, I think you'll notice a little wiggling stuff. I stop and dry it with a hair dryer. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought maybe I was going to try it. Oh, I'm trying to get some dark in there. So nothing wrong with that, other than I've got a lot of wet on wet brush stroking, so I just grab some matte medium to make it wetter. I didn't want that dry brush stroke in there that I had with the darker purple. I'm hoping this might help you see how long I actually pause and think. Sometimes I'm thinking, what does this need? What do I, and then I'm like, okay, do what you like. You'll eventually find new things that you like and can do. But you wanna enjoy this and have fun. You wanna challenge yourself, which is also what I'm trying to do here. And, and hopefully help you guys with clouds a little bit struggle along with me. I'm also thinking pull some purple over to the left because until this moment I had a lot of 
Still do have a lot of clouds stacking up on the right. Ah, I just fixed it a little bit there. Yay me! <laughs> Everybody clap. Here, I can't really clap because I'm holding a microphone. Here, yay! <laughs> that that little thing helped. I don't know if you guys like it, but that what I just did there helped. It is interesting to be a creative person and to bounce between the creative artist and the critic. Um, that's why when artists step back, they're going into more critic mode. You know, look at it, take a photo of it, and look at it through your phone. Um, I don't know if artists do it so much anymore. They used to put a mirror behind them if they always worked at a big easel or something. And you could just turn around and look in the mirror because it flips it, which really helps your brain see it differently. And it gives you distance without having to actually get up and step back. Oh, see, I'm happier because now I'm thinking highlights. I'm like, oh, crud. I didn't like how that curled down there. That's all right. I kind of smeared it and we'll just add some little details. And now I'm getting more light direction too, which is also helping. Even though it's right down the bottom left-hand corner, which is not necessarily a good design choice. You know, I've kind of cooled it down more so I have more of a pop of orange. And I'm directing your eye more up from the bottom left to the top right. And that's also helping. Sometimes it's not so much your art or your skill. It's kind of the design of the thing that can help you too. I'm also saying this isn't great design since I anchored my sunset in the bottom left-hand corner. We're practicing, right? Right, friends? I need to... I don't know if I know artists that do sunsets a lot that I, I personally like. You want to watch artists that you like their art. Um, I need to find some because I bet you I would learn watching them paint. I watch Karen Margulis. She does a lot of flowers and chalk pastel. I watch Chris Fornatero. I think he calls himself the paint coach. These are on YouTube. He does oil painting. He does some great portraits. He does great landscapes. He's a really good painter. I really like watching him. Um, Streamline art videos might also be called paint tube. I think it's a publishing company that has a lot of great artists on it doing demos. Who else do I watch? Oh, um, Marla. Oh, I just bumped my phone. Hopefully I didn't bump my microphone. Marla Bagata. She has online classes, really extensive for beginners. Um, she's, I think she's awesome. I don't know if she does a lot of sunsets. She might. I'll have to look through her videos. So some of this detail may be helping me. I'm not sure yet, totally. I'm hinting at little light clouds off in the distance. And I don't think I like the little sort of half moon C shapes I get with the filbert. So that's why I, I will sometimes rub with my finger. And this could be too much detail. How do you know? Some of it's just personal preference. But I am liking this better. I hope you guys are too. Let me know in the comments. But okay, so we're seven and seven eighths. Um, over three fourths of the way through this video and I'm starting to like it. I've got a I've also got a better balance, not not nearly as much warm colors. I've glazed over them with cool colors. I'm liking that better. Um, I'm starting to play with light and directing your eye a little bit. Y 
you could totally just paint this black and white. Or as I probably mentioned way too times, check out the link in this video to my other cloud video. It, it, it's a big help. I do a palette knife cloud. The color can make it harder because you have more things you're thinking about. And that other one, you're just thinking about white clouds on a, on a blue background. Oh, see, now that stroke I just did that points down to the left is on purpose because it points to my, my sunrise. Oh, I'm calling it done, you guys. <laughs> Taking the paint off. And I've got so much paint on it because <laughs> I have two layers of white plus all the sky plus the clouds. I should have been a little bit more careful. It doesn't want to come off. <laughs> Well, let me know if this helps. Of course, you can't tell right now because I've got my hands over it. I'm trying to peel the paint off. This was all in real time. So for those of you who like to see every brush stroke, I do like that I have cooler trees on the bottom right and it kind of sinks back into the background with the sky. And then the trees on the bottom left are warmer and kind of come forward a bit with the sunset, which is kind of fun. I think this is a pretty decent attempt. I think I need more practice. But that's what the fun of painting. You know, you I don't you never get there. You keep practicing. And I like the hints of purple and the orange. I like playing with compliments. If you guys know me, I do like my compliments. Oh, and I super appreciate the super thanks and the support and the super chat, super stickers. People send money for the traceables. It helps pay for the canvas. This was canvas uh, paper pad that I got on Amazon, eight by 10 inch, already gessoed and I just taped it to a piece of cardboard. Thanks for hanging out with me. Great big happy art hugs. And I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.